Hi, my name is Darren Williams. I'm the Global Brand Manager in charge of Stalker. So what we're going to show you now is a presentation of some of the features that you're going to see in the game. Now, Stalker is obviously based in the Chernobyl area. In 1986, the nuclear reactor there exploded in what is still the worst nuclear disaster of all time. Now, GSC Gameworld, who are the developers, are only 100 kilometers away from Chernobyl in the city of Kiev, and they can actually remember the accident. So they've used this as the starting point for Stalker. Stalker's based in the year 2012. It's part of GSC's alternative future vision, but around about 2006, something strange happens at the old reactor, and this huge zone's created. It's about 30 square kilometers in size, and this is the setting for the game. Now, the zone's a very weird place. It's full of mutant creatures, but the really interesting things are the artifacts. These are irradiated objects that have weird properties, so people are very keen to get hold of them. So that's why you're in the zone. A stalker is kind of a scavenger who goes into the zone to steal these artifacts from people. There's an abundance of life within the zone, so the first game feature we'll discuss is A-Life. This is the artificial intelligence system that controls the creature's behavior. Stalker is an unscripted game. None of the creatures we're gonna see are scripted. Instead, they have a list of basic needs, to feed, to hunt, to take shelter, to rest. Some are nocturnal, some are scared of the dark, and some are affected by the weather. They're even territorial, so you'll see them fighting amongst themselves. But it all happens unscripted, so the zone is constantly changing as the creatures move around. We'll take a look at some of the mutants in the zone now, and some of the powers that they have due to their mutations. This guy's called a Bloodsucker. His talent is that he can turn invisible. This obviously makes him a very dangerous opponent, because he's very tough, but he's also very, very elusive. Although we can see him here during the daytime, he's actually nocturnal by nature. So when the day-night cycle kicks in and it turns to evening, you're going to see a lot more bloodsuckers. The next creature is the Chernobyl Dog. Don't look at him, look at the gun. He's affecting my aim with a psychic attack, so this is his particular defense mechanism. Now the next creature is called a Pseudo-Giant. He's not that sophisticated, he doesn't have any real powers, but he's very strong, very aggressive, and very, very dangerous. As he has very short arms, his attack strategy involves getting close to you. Even grenades don't keep him at distance, so you're going to want to avoid him at all costs. However, the next creature is different. He's called a Bura, and physically he's very, very weak. However, you can use telekinesis to throw things at you. His approach is all based on keeping distance. If he has nothing to throw, he can fire blasts of heat, but the principle is the same, keeping distance. Because as we see here, if we get close, he's very easy to kill. 